Sarah, episode one of For Real Asides. Do you For want to come up with a little jingle? Oh, no. No. <laughs> you can't say either. That's, Jeremy will come up with a jingle. You're okay. okay, Jeremy can come up with a jingle to, uh, to document the beginning of her For Real Asides. What is a for real episode in case anyone didn't hear the episode before? Okay, these are just going to be little snippets. We're going to try to keep them around 15 minutes, but mm. that is a tall feat for two friends who really like to talk. Um, <laughs> but we're just going to tackle a silly question. Sometimes they're going to be really related. Sometimes they are really not. Like today, so Today's. today we'll tell you everything you need to know when you hear our really dumb question. Yes. So basically, we, I was thinking about like, how I had been craving something where it was fun and silly and uh, for listening, I mean, and I thought, well, who, who do I like to talk to when I need a laugh or I need a fun story? And you came to mind immediately. And I was like, well, what if Sarah and I just started thinking of silly things to talk about? Cause she's such a good storyteller. Um, and so I asked you and immediately you were like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> And so these are going to be 15 minutes. We've come up with, well, you came up with a ton of questions. Um, and, uh, and so we're going to work our way through them. Would you like to share what the first episode is? Oh, yeah. first question. I don't know why I'm so excited about this one, but I am going to ask you what the strangest thing in your refrigerator is right now. I'm going to flip that back to you because you just told me before we started recording that you can come up with three weird things that I, you think I have in my fridge. Well, yes, but I also have the luxury of having lived with you for like five months once upon a time. For those who obviously cannot tell, Tina is British and they have some, some really interesting culinary choices. So I'm going to say right off the bat, there's got to be a jar of Marmite in your fridge. Am I right? Well, technically Marmite is not in the fridge. It's on the shelf, but um, I can let that slide. I do have Marmite. I do love Marmite, but I think I actually don't know what would happen if you put it in the fridge, if it would like go into a, can you imagine like a lollipop and you're like, Whoa, gross. oh my God, a Marmite sickle. That's disgusting. <laughs> oh man. You could not pay me to eat that. Seriously. Um, so Marmite is one, if you are not British, Tina made me try it. The British people, but then again, you people eat beans on toast. So you eat anything. This is there. so good. Okay, I have tried it once. I had a full Irish breakfast, which is almost the same thing. But it's like mm. all like I'm a, I'm a, I like cinnamon rolls for breakfast. I like sweet things. You guys are like savory roast like tomatoes and beans and cheese all on a, all on a plate for breakfast. But um, yeah, you had me eat marmite on toast, and it really just tasted like um, if I licked your face after a workout. <laughs> like, that's what it tasted. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. It's very <laughs> salty. Your eyebrows, like it really is really <laughs> um, super salty. So I'm going to say you have Marmite in your fridge. Also, I can't remember the name of it, but you have some sort of condiment that is not relevant. I know which one you're it's sort of oniony. What is it? It's, it um, tastes like it's on a hamburger, like a McDonald's. All the, all the British people are yelling at the at the things right now. It's called Branson pick, Branson's pickle, and it's good. I'm not going to lie. That oh, yeah. is delicious. Yeah, that is good. Although you're coming up with strange things. These aren't strange things. They are normal things to have okay. in the fridge. For those who live in the good old US of A, that is really strange. <laughs> I'm not trying. You didn't you didn't remember or maybe you did. There was a third one, which is the one actually well, Marmite's usually the one people are most interested in, but there's also one that people laugh at the name. What is it? Um salad cream. Did you have oh, one? Yeah, yeah. It's basically mayonnaise, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'd say like mayonnaise crossed with vinegar. Oh like man, vinegary. I don't know what's more disgusting than mayonnaise or salad cream. Although I thought, why don't they have a condiment that is like mayonnaise and mustard called Maytard? <laughs> I went to the store and they do, but they call it mayo must. And I was like, that was a really missed opportunity for, for Maytard. Mayo must. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that is a shame. Now uh, I'm going to say you have some sort of meat alternative, like is it tempe or tempeh? You, I feel like I've seen you eat that before. Do you have that in your fridge right now? I do not right now. No, I actually need to go to the store. So I don't have any meat alternative. I don't think in there. Um, to answer the question, what is the strangest thing I have in there? I do have this weird little radish looking thing that my farm share gave. I have no idea what it's called. Um, it's kind of like a cross between a radish and a pumpkin. Is so, it a turnip? Is it purplish? No. Uh, not a turnip. I get really, really strange looking. Like I get like gray pumpkins. 
um, sometimes. <laughs> and, like, um, like, you know what, Tina, subscribe last to this. Let's just scrape the bottom of the barrel and send it to her in a box. She'll eat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's definitely some strange things. I also got, uh, what did I get? Horseradish mustard from them the other day. So that's in there. Oh, interesting. That's Actually, a bit of it. I don't, that to me is repulsive. I do not like mustard or horseradish. Really? Um, yeah. So if you want me to mail that to you, I can. I, I, would, um, I would not mind trying a horseradish mustard combo. <laughs> um, all right. That's, that's, let me think, let me see if there's anything else. Cause I want to let people know Sarah and I intentionally did not think of the answers ahead of time. Is there anything else in there? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that's probably the weirdest thing, unless you count like some kind of weird dressing that I made up for a salad. Oh um, yeah. Dressings are so good. You make very good dressings. You make a good, like, like vinaigrette. Um, all right. Um, your turn. Yes. Okay. So here's the thing about Alabama. So we moved to Alabama like a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, when you buy a house in Alabama, the fridge doesn't come with it. So it's, it's great. You get a fresh, start, a fresh fridge. <laughs> However, if you were so to people take their fridges with them, they do, which is so weird. It's like, leave it. It's a heavy thing to move and the washer and dryer. It's, it's a bummer, mm -hmm. but with fridges, it's great. Cause like I have a habit of just letting my fridge really go. So like, even now I've only lived here a year. If you were to send someone into my house and look just at the condiments in my fridge and have them guess how long I've lived in this house, probably 12 or 13 years. <laughs> yes. Um, here's why I have a habit of make real having like really ambitious dinner dishes that require like all these random ingredients that I use one time and then never touch again example. And this leads to the strangest thing in my fridge. Like six months ago, I was like, I want to make pad thai and not like, like a kit, like a pad thai that you buy in the store in a box. Cause I've made that. And it's just not the same as like when you order, like take out pad thai, mm -hmm. it has like that distinctive flavor. So I did like the sauce. Yes. Yes. I have that too. <laughs> So I deep dive into the bowels of the internet and, there, and I found this recipe that like a good, a really good like New York restaurant uses. And they're like, yeah, you need like actual oyster sauce and nowhere had it. So I had to drive to like the actual Asian market, like 13 miles down the road. Mm. Now oyster sauce for anyone who doesn't know, uh, just imagine <laughs> you like drive to your nearest seashore and dredge the bottom of the sea <laughs> and then dump it in a blender, blend it up. And then what comes out is like the color and consistency of motor oil. And it smells like the sea. Like it's the most disgusting thing. <laughs> Literally, Tina, it's like a two liter of oyster sauce. I know, I know. But it's magic how it does, the, how it literally makes, that's the secret though, right? So you can't open it without gagging and yet without it, the pad thai does not taste good. It's magic. It's sorcery. So I'd say that is, is top three. And I then add to that, I have like feline insulin and breast milk, which are two things that most people don't have in their fridge. So I'd say that is probably the strangest thing I have in my, in my fridge right oh now. Oh my God. I love that. Yes. And oyster sauce is definitely an interesting one. I, um, I love mail me your horseradish. I'll mail you my oysters. <laughs> <laughs> so good. The person in the with the mail carrier is going to be like, "What is this?" Oh my gosh! <laughs> Especially if the oyster sauce broken away, be like, "What is this box that smells <laughs> like the sea?" Oh, that's so good. Starfish. <laughs> oh, that's awful. Okay. Well, well, now we learn something about each other, and um, and about and about the contents of our fridge. So. Let's have everyone, if you want to share what, the strangest thing you have in your fridge, please, we would love to hear. You can send us a message. Uh, you can tag us in something on social media. You can send us a message. We would love to hear. And uh, yeah, let's let's make this into a conversation to see who has the, the, the strangest thing in their fridge. And also, Tina, because both of us have oyster sauce in our fridge, I, we should have a poll of how many people have that in their fridge because mm. it's more common than I think. Mm -hmm. And actually, I forgot to say, I was going to say before I got distracted by you describing oyster sauce, <laughs> while I don't know what you're doing now with um, two kids under three, um, or three or under, I, um, your dinners were so good. Like you put so much time, love, energy into it. I remember you used to make like pork loin and you'd like, you'd roll it around like goat cheese and you like oh, you just was so good you'd have all these fresh herbs it was just that was oh, i miss you cooking Sarah. let me just tell you she has died she, no, she needs no more. <laughs> this, this this sarah makes bulk dinners that will last three nights <laughs> in the quickest possible time so, yeah 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 uh, ask me again you. in about 17 years and maybe yeah. I'm 
<laughs> rolled more slowly in the kitchen. It's the washing up on the other end, right? It's for me, it's not even about the cooking. It's like, what can I do that uses so, one pot? So yes. I have one thing to wash up and one spoon. Just leave it at that because there's already like 12 different plates from the day from two people. So I don't want any more to add to my washing up. All right, let's wrap it up here. Thank you so much for episode one. Uh, Join us again next week for episode two and uh, we'll see you then. Bye.